We continue with our discussion of the method of separation of variables to solve differential equations of this form, where in the previous part we looked at the more complicated explanation and now we'll look at a more shorthand explanation. So this is um, um, a slightly more compact version of this. So we have dy dx is equal to y, which fits this profile as g of y is equal to y, and f of x is simply equal to 1. Well, separation of variables, everything with y we move left, and everything with x we move right. So we get 1 over y dy, and this dx travels to the right-hand side. So yes, we can separate this out because before we explained that we can use the substitution rule um, to separate these out. The next step is simply write an integral in front of the part we have separated and to solve them. So we get ln y, we've skipped the left hand, the, the integration constant on the left hand side is equal to x plus c and that's where it shows up. Uh, let's call it C1, just for uh, ease. So we went from the differential equation, separation of variables where everything with y goes left, everything with x goes right. Of course, here we had to multiply left and right for the dx to end up there. But that's just an algebraic manipulation. Um, we take e to the power of the left-hand side and e to the power of the right-hand side. And uh, what we do then is, is we find that y absolute is e to the power of x times e to the power of c1. And we skip that whole discussion we had on the board here about the positive values of this and the negative and equal to zero. Then we just say y of x is equal to some form of c e to the power of x and we are done with it. So this e to the power of c1 becomes c and we just lose the absolute values. We can do this because we know what we're doing from a longer discussion, but this is what the book does and you see that it is much more compact. So the separation of variables, we leave out the part of the uh, substitution rule and um, we move from this point immediately to this point and have a solution. Well, let's have another example. Uh, dy dx is equal to x times y minus 2. And here, again, we know that it fits this profile, uh, so we can use separation of variables where everything with x goes to the right and everything with y goes to the left. So I have 1 over y minus 2 dy is x times dx. And this is the separation of variable part. Now we integrate left and right. So 1 over y minus 2 dy is equal to x dx. We integrate left and right. So ln y minus 2 is equal to half x squared plus c. To get rid of this natural logarithm, we take the um, exponential function ln y minus 2 is equal to e to the power of half x squared plus c which we can write as, uh, well, we rewrite this, y minus 2 absolute is equal to e to the power of c times e to the power of a half x squared. And we remove the absolute values, let's call this c1, y minus 2 is equal to c e to the power of 1 half x squared and the only thing left to do is move this 2 to the other side and we have our solution y of x is equal to c e to the power of 1 half x squared plus 2. We still get a, a family of solutions here of course c is some kind of constant which uh, we choose in the rational numbers but this uh, slight um, but you see that this slightly more compact version of writing things out makes it easier to come to your solution. Where we, when we have e to the power of c1, we just simply write c, or you can, if you choose c here, you can write a or whatever name for your constant, it doesn't really matter, but this is the way that we can write out our solutions. We will uh, continue um, with 
probably one more example and then we will move to partial fraction expansion uh, but we will do that in the next part.